Yeah, currently we have, a, um, actually we have a world that is split in two parts. When we talk about um, oncogenic mutations and targeted therapy of lung cancer, we have the Western world, or as people say, the Caucasian population, where we have actually rather low incidence of EGFR mutations in our German collections, like most Western European countries, it's 12% uh, of the lung adenocarcinomas. We have about 4% ALK fusions, uh, ROS fusions, MET, uh, RET fusions and MET alterations. Altogether, only 20% in the Western population um, of patients reveal mutations that allow to deliver targeted and highly effective uh, uh, therapies by tyrosine kinase inhibitors. However, in the East, like East Asia, China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, uh, we have um, uh, roughly 50% of um, uh, patients with lung adenocarcinomas that have uh, EGFR mutations and are eligible for EGFR TKIs. And the difference, the big difference uh, that explains that is the KRAS mutations. In the Western world, we have 30% uh, of KRAS mutations. Um, and in the East, KRAS mutations are actually quite rare. And now the big innovation we have seen is that KRAS mutations become targetable because that has the biggest, been the biggest problem in oncology for decades. And we have now this new inhibitors that target a specific cystic mutation in KRAS. The position G12 is mutated to a cysteine, call it a G12C KRAS mutations. And this is half li in, in the Western population, approximately 50% of the mutations in lung cancer. So of the big mountain of 30% of patients with KRAS mutation, we have half. 50% of all patients that have this uh, uh, specific system mutations and now become targetable with the new drug. Actually, uh, KRAS uh, sequencing and finding out is there a KRAS mutation in lung cancer and what type is it a G12C mutation is fairly easy. It's pretty standard in most of the molecular pathology labs that do sequencing of cancer. And um, so uh, it's not a problem in terms of from the diagnostic point of view. It's more uh, a problem, KRAS inhibitors have been a problem for a long time because we had several waves of new inhibitors coming in. They all have been clinically too toxic. So we have, um, with the with uh, AMG510 inhibitor that specifically targets that cysteine mutations, we have now two layers of selectivity. It's a small molecule that will only target um, the active enzyme pocket of uh, uh, KRAS, and it only will uh, attack the mutated cysteine. So it's extremely selective or the KRAS mutation in the tumor. And um, that, that principle was first published um, from a group uh, in, in San Francisco Cancer Center. And uh, they actually uh, showed that the principle is, is working clinically. And now um, the drugs have become available and it's, um, we will see a new wave of innovation for KRAS mutated lung cancer patients. Uh, the, the term, what is the current standard of care for lung cancer patients is quite difficult because there has been so many rapid waves of innovation. But in, in because only 10 years ago, practically all patients with non surgically non-resectable lung cancers received chemotherapies, non-selective chemotherapies. They had very, very low effectivity and and a high burden of tox toxicity. Now, these days, we practically test every patient with a non-small cell lung cancer for drug mutations. And if there are no oncogenic mutations that can be drugged, 
then um, they are, the, the patients receive immune therapies or combined immune chemotherapies. So within 10 years, practically the treatment of every single lung cancer patient worldwide has changed. Well, there are, there are very advanced clinical trials going on and we expect the uh, approval um, of uh, the, K, the new KRAS inhibitors actually quite soon. Um, hopefully already in 2020. And if that is the case, um, we will have this treatment available for in, in the routine standard uh, care for every lung cancer patient that has the specific mutation. Um, and however, I, I still think even with the approval, the research on patients with KRAS G12C mutations will continue to go on because what we see clinically is that not every tumor, non-small cell lung cancer with a KRAS G12C mutation is the same. We have tumors that have a high expression of immune checkpoints. We have tumors that have a KRAS mutation but have also co-occurring other mutations. We have tumors with KRAS mutations that are adenocarcinomas, others are squamous cell carcinomas. So we will need more clinical experience on all these subgroups of patients to decide should we initially start with, um, with AMG 510 as the first drug or is it possible to combine it with immune therapy or start with immune therapy if immune therapy fails switch on so uh, that will that will um, uh, um, require further clinical um, science and testing and so to to find out the best optimal therapy strategy for every individual patients so that the, the landscape is not finished and solved if the drug gets approved, but we will have uh, still to find out what patient benefits in an optimal way from combinations from first line, second line therapies and so forth. Yeah, for, for actually, um, Personally, when we uh, in Cologne started to test lung cancer patients, it's now 11 years ago, when we made the fundamental decision that every patient with a non-small cell lung cancer needs extensive sequencing and immune typing to select um, therapies. Um, when we started that, that it was, we've had only few patients, but in the meanwhile, the whole landscape changed and actually lung cancer pathology is a completely new clinical um, clinical science now than it was 10 years ago. So the addition of genomic information, of immunological information into classical histopathology um, is um, actually has changed lung cancer pathology completely. The, the oncogenic mutation the, in KRAS, KRAS G12C mutations uh, exist also in other cancer types, not only lung cancer, but it's, it's to a smaller extent, it exists in colon cancer and um, also in pancreatic cancers. And, the, the, and again, in every tumor type, the situation is a little bit different. Lung cancer luckily turned out to be a tumor type where KRAS G12C mutations in the Western world are very frequent and also the patient have the best responses to the, to the inhibitors. So I think it is important to do very careful clinical research in the individual cancer types and not to draw conclusions from success in lung cancer to pancreatic cancer and so forth. The rational understanding uh, of cancer types, what are the important oncogenic mutations, what are the Im important interactions between the immune systems and the cancer cells, 
um, has really, really made a major progress for, for lung cancer patients. With the targeted therapies, we have seen now stage four lung cancer patients that live for more than 10 years in good quality. That's something that never, ever happened, existed in, in, in human history. And that is uh, has completely changed the outcome also of, of some subgroups of lung cancer patients. Thank <music> you.